Yo, and welcome to another fast paced review video. This one on the Magis Cycle Cruiser Pro, you see strapped to the El Camino. Uh, so we're out here at the Lost Dutchman State Park in Arizona. It's just outside of uh, Apache Junction. Pretty awesome backdrop. And just got this in the mail yesterday. So we're gonna break her open, see what it's all about. Maybe go for a ride, do a little range testing too. I think I'll switch over to the sun hat since it's a little toasty out. I did go ahead and open the box last night, pull the battery out, put, uh, fully charge it so that way we don't have to wait for that because some of these batteries take you know, seven, eight hours. It's got a port on the side that's keyed so you can't plug it in wrong. And then right here you do have a battery indicator. You just press that and it shows three green bars, one red bar. Each of those equal 25%. Taking a glance inside, you can see they did a very nice job protecting everything with foam. I don't see any damage at first sight, but we will certainly let you know as we get this together. Let's pull her on out and give you a few assembly tips. Always make sure to cut your zip ties on this side. That way you can pull it out and reuse the zip tie. Especially with the larger ones, but on this trip, you never know how many zip ties we could end up needing. Normally I'd suggest cutting each side of the box open, fold it down, and then you build the bike on that cardboard, but we're gonna be keeping that in case we have to put it back in there. But, uh, here's a look at everything it came with. We got some, some gloves, keep your hands clean while building it. Aluminium pedals, a front headlight, a, a bag with some tools in it. It's nice and handy. A MagiCycle hat. The owner's manual, which I will be going uh, and showing pictures of this at the end of the video in case you want to see the details. They do have torque specs and all, all that, so very good info in there. Uh, the battery is a 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery, LG cells in it. That's uh, Hopefully that's going to get us some good range. Got the plastic front fender and 26 inch by 4 uh, front wheel. I like how they put nice protectors on the rotor. This does have hydraulic disc brakes in the front and rear telescoping front suspension you can adjust the preload has a lockout the bike weighs 76 pounds has a payload of 350 pounds including the rider and any gear that you come on you might notice it does come with a heavy duty rack on the back and a bungee cord the way you take that off is just push down or at least on the other side right i think you could do either side yeah push down but be careful because i had this uh whip back at me uh, you just let's get like a little quick quick connect on there 750 watt hub motor rated at 20 miles an hour and they advertise 50 to 80 mile range you got some keys for the battery seven speed shimano and it does have seven speed power assist on it too i love these grips the way they have the kind of the flatter part that sticks out really easy on your hands you see it does come with a tail light and after looking around this bike 360 i don't see one speck of damage so big thumbs up on the packaging oh watch before you take a knee in the desert in the tool kit, we got wrenches, a reversible screwdriver, and some Allens. I'm gonna start by spinning this bar clamp so it's facing forward, and then tighten down these two five millimeter Allens. Unfortunately, in the kit, it doesn't seem, they, they forgot the five mil Allen, so luckily I had you know, another set. And now once you have this straight, you can tighten those down. Maybe a better idea to put the bars on first, but I'm gonna just line her up straight. So snug these each down. Again, those torque specs, will be at the end in the owner's manual. Remove the four four millimeter Allens on this clamp. And so far I'm seeing all stainless steel hardware on this bike. Now bring your bars around and make sure that you uh, check that the cable routing is proper. You don't have anything twisted. With the bars centered on there, start all four screws, snug them down, but leave them so you can still rock the bars back and forth. We'll do a final tightening later after setting them where we want them. With the front wheel, you got your quick release and then a little pad separator in there. Take the end caps off the wheel. Probably easier with two people, but go ahead and loosen the other side of it. And then we gotta get our little spacer out, so you gotta take that fully, fully off. Okay, there's our full axle. Slide it into here. And then with the spring on the other side, it goes so the small tapered end is in. Thread the nut on. And as you're sliding it on, just make sure the disc goes into the caliper properly. Now I'm using this hand to spin the nut down, but if you spin it down too tight, you see I can't fold the cam lock. So you gotta loosen that nut a little bit until you see that would be too loose. So spin it down a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little tighter. And that should be pretty good locking right there. You might wanna check on it in the future though. Let's see how this wheel spins, if it's true. Yes, she is. Try out that kickstand. Oh yeah. 
Now put both your pedals on. They are marked left and right. The left side is going to have reverse thread, so you have to spin it lefty tidy. Use the 15 mil to snug them down. Seems like a really high quality seat. Pull the buckle back and then you can raise it up. You do have your, your minimum insertion line on here, so don't go any higher than, than that. And of course, if you feel like this clamp is too loose, you just spin the nut down on the other side a little bit, and then that should take care of the issue. Now put your front light and fender on. You can see the hardware is already in place on the bike. And here's the connector for the headlight. Front fender should look like this. You got the bolt going through, then the fender bracket, and then the light bracket and washer nut. And that went on there good. Let's slide the battery in. Doesn't look like we need the keys in on the other side since this little tab can push in. So you got this tab right here that the battery uh, locks into. And then look at that. It just clicks into place. You do need the key to remove it now. Let me just slide that in. Turn it, and look at that, it, it actually spring-loaded off. It's got the little spring-loaded detent right here. That's your lock, and that's the spring pop-off. You now want to hop on the bike and do a final positioning of the bars in the seat, and then snug down these Allens the rest of the way, just evenly in a cross pattern, tightening them down. Just make sure not to strip them out. Good action on the brakes, nice and firm once you get to the halfway point. And we might have to do an adjustment on the gears, but we'll find out later. And we're pretty much ready for a test drive, but the last thing you're gonna wanna do is go over every nut and bolt on this bike. Make sure the rear axle's tight and all these nuts and bolts everywhere, because you don't want anything falling off on you. You will notice it has bolts for a, uh, it looks like for a water bottle or tool kit, and then for a front rack on there. Uh, I did go on this front axle, and originally I had this pointing up. I uh, spun that so it's pointing back now. That way nothing can hit it. And, I'll pop it off by mistake as you're riding. But uh, look, it's nice we got a little guard right on here too to keep the cable from hitting anything. The derailleur was already in place. A lot of time those aren't. You'll also want to go ahead and set your uh, tire pressure, which these are showing a minimum of 5 and a maximum of 30 PSI cold. I'm going to go ahead and set mine up to 20 PSI, I think. And let's fire it up. Looks like we got four buttons. A power button, so I'm going to hold that. Two seconds, it's already coming on. We got plus, information, and minus. So this is still loading up here. Oh yeah, look at that display. We're showing 100% on the battery. You get your miles per hour. Wow, this is the first bike I've ever got that's in miles per hour, not kilometers, uh, right out of the uh, package. You get the trip. Let's see if I hit the info button. That should, yep, there's your odometer, zero miles. Max speed, 16.3, average 1.8. You got your time. And back to the trip. Now let's see if this has the walking feature. Most bikes, if you hold the negative down, it will go ahead and, yep, there it is. Oh, that's a fast walking speed. Uh, so if you need to like walk it up the hill or whatever, I'm sure that's adjustable. So there's, there's many different things you can adjust in here. And again, I'll show that in the manual at the end. I wanna say that's the wattage gauge and then an analog type speedometer. Jen's hanging out with Gus doing a little bit of editing. Let's go for this first ride. Don't know if we'll do a full range test, but let's see, let's see what she's all about. She's pedaling along here in the first gear. I'm go ahead and cycle through. Nice engagement to second, and I'll try them each out. Oh yeah, third gear is getting tough, got a little hill. So all I gotta do is hit the plus button once, and that, oh yeah, there it is. Now we're in power assist one. So as I sit here pedaling, you know, it's effortlessly going up this slight hill. Now let's see what happens when I stop pedaling. All right, it's pretty instantaneously off, which some, some bikes, they take, you know, half second, second to, quit with the power assist let me see that again i'll show you listen that that goes off pretty quick which is nice now keep in mind when whenever you're pedaling if you just hit the brakes at any moment it does turn off the motor as well and as i'm just pedaling along i'm gonna go ahead and do a brake test those feel amazing and also a no hands test so if we let go of the bars she's tracking straight and true very true actually i mean i can lean to the right goes right lean to the left goes left some bikes they don't ride as true as uh you know as others i apologize if the camera angles aren't amazing but i'm just trying to bring you guys some info uh, i'm on power assist seven now and it doesn't matter if you're on one or seven but as you start pedaling that kind of kicks in abruptly so if you're you know, you, you want to be using your uh, your power and you're in somewhere you don't want to kick in so quick you do have the throttle right here oh uh, see as i'm cruising along i can give that it's a half twist throttle i can give it like you know a throttle and now we're just kind of putting along under motor power 
uh, no problem at all. It does have cruise control, so if you hold that for about five to eight seconds after you let go, it will just continue at the speed that you, you left it. To turn off, hit your brakes or just flip the throttle and it'll turn off. When you use the twist throttle, it doesn't matter if you're on power assist one or seven, it brings you up to the top speed. I'm indicating 20.7 miles an hour on there and our GPS speed is 20 miles an hour, so that seems pretty darn accurate. I don't know how well you can see it, but see how I'm just barely moving the pedals? It'll keep you going 10 miles an hour in power setting one, power assist one. See the wattage is 299, but see if you just start pedaling, like now I'm applying pedal power and that wattage should drop down. Yeah, it's down to like 30, so it's barely using any of the power of, uh, for the battery if you're applying power with your legs. I know this is pretty basic stuff, but I'm just trying to show you everything that I notice about the bike. And so far, I'm really digging it. Guys, make sure to wear a helmet. You know, I don't have one with me today, but it's, it's not smart to ride a bicycle like this without a helmet on. Forget if I mentioned, but when you're on power assist zero, the throttle doesn't work at all. You have to be on at least one uh, to be able to do that. Uh, we're now gonna try some off-road and uh, see how she does. We could drop our tire pressure down, but so far it actually feels pretty good. Here's a little hill climb. That's full power of the bike. Just motoring right up this, no problem. It gets pretty steep here too. And I feel like a lazy guy because people are <laughs> riding these trails uh, with regular mountain bikes. Not, you're probably not even allowed to ride a motorized bike on here, I don't know, but definitely regretting not dropping the tires down. Probably uh, should have done that, but it's smoothing out a little bit here. And I feel like I'm riding a dirt bike on this trail. So, legal? Probably not, but fun? Heck yeah. This is, it's hard to follow the trail out here too, because it's not very well marked. I'm just kind of following this, the other bike paths here. And while she is a hardtail, having those fat tires really makes the ride pretty darn smooth. Um, you know, that front suspension is doing really nice too. I don't even have to mess with the preload yet. Feels good. Oh yeah, the cruiser is very capable compared to, oh, don't hit that cactus. Oh, man. Yeah, you don't want to fall out here. Yeah, I can't say it enough. If you're going to ride trails like this, definitely drop the tires down. I mean, especially, you don't want to slide out and hit one of these cactuses because that's going to be... A bad day, you know? Not gonna feel good. You know, I think this is a good spot to show the walking feature, kind of down in the rut. I know GoPros don't show how steep stuff is, but this is fairly steep, so you just hold the minus button and it should go in. It. There it is. Now it's it's walking itself up. I can I can walk it up this hill holding it with one one hand, no problem. And uh, you know, it gets pretty gnarly here, so that's a great feature to have. I think I'll drop these down a scotch and then when we do the range test, probably tomorrow. We'll put them back up to the max pressure. Oh my, that is night and day. Rides so much smoother. Trail system here is a little wacky. It's had some washouts, I guess. Ooh, there's the thorns. Probably some snakes in here. Now we're on the wrong side of the barbed wire. Weighing 76 pounds, this thing, oh, she is a tank to pick up. Oh my gosh. cannot even imagine falling into one of these. I think these are called like a jumping cactus or something, but I, I got one in the foot the other day and then I pulled it off and it got stuck to my hand and, oh geez, if you fell into that. They're barbed, very hard to get out. Oof. And so far, tires, nope, you know, holding up good, no flat tires yet. 
And there's a lot of sharp things around here that could give us a flat. And as I think I was mentioning earlier, the speed settings are fully customizable on this. So if you feel like speed one is too fast for you, you can dial that in uh, to be less miles an hour. Yeah, cause speed one is, I mean, pretty fast really, like for mountain bike trails, you, I mean, that's, that's a little faster than you really need. Let's check out these settings real quick. So it said you hold positive, negative, it jumps right into it. You got wheel size, if you want to uh, adjust that you can, and, and to dial in your speedometer better, uh, to exit out, hit uh, info again. Now to scroll around, hit plus, or all right, negative will bring us over to speed limit. I'm gonna bump that up to the max. Okay, I went around the, the 28 miles an hour. And then you can see you can do your brightness, and you got voltage, and flipping through, I guess that's if you use a different battery, I'm not sure, I'll have to, Go and read the manual and you got these settings. So, so lots of things you could change in here. Uh, advanced, what do we got for that? Oh my God, look at that. You can change everything. It's such a nice interface. And there's your power set, zero to seven. And so you can change the percentages. So I'm actually gonna bump number one down to like 32%. You can change your units, put a password in, factory reset, mess around with the display. Yeah, I could. you could spend a lot of time in that, but again, all that's gonna be in the uh, owner's manual. And hopping on the main road, let's try out that top speed. Heck yeah, we're indicating 29 mile an hour and this feels really, really good. I don't think I gotta worry about this getting stolen here. However, one thing I don't like is there's no key for this bike. I mean, you could use the key to take the battery out and that's a large piece gonna you know, deter people from stealing, but they could still, uh, pedal it away of course no matter what however i did just go in on the, the password and i set a password on it so let's see if that works you know, turn it off you just long press that power button i'm gonna long press this back on and boom now we got a password so you hit up up and just put it all zeros and that was just in the settings i this interface is just so easy to use there's no need for a tutorial to show you how to do everything and now with that password in nobody can just hit the button and go Let's see if we can find the coffee around here. Coffee and bakery. Closed. Darn. Yeah, well, we tried. So I just fired the bike back up and it's still showing 100% at 8.3 miles. It was down to 80 something earlier, but uh, let's go lay some miles down. This isn't going to be the uh, official range test, but we're going to go hit the road. Uh, also, look, it's got a USB charging port for charging your phone on there. No cell phone holder, though. It's definitely something you want to add. I think we'll head down to Canyon Lake. It's probably like 11 miles. Uh, pretty steep grades, though, so it's going to hopefully put a good test on this battery. And cruising down the road, that battery dropped down to 64% while holding it wide open. So you, you can't go by that all the time. I mean, it's going to fluctuate quite a bit, but it's still nice to have the percentage on there to give you an idea what's going on. It's starting to get a little weak sauce up some of these grades. We're down to 47%. Not sure if we'll quite make it to the lake. I'm doing some pedal assist, but nothing crazy. Unfortunately, I don't think this has any regenerative braking for recharging the battery going down hills. I'll let you know if I find out otherwise, but that's always a nice thing to have, especially on these long, windy downgrades. All right, we made it to the Canyon Lake viewpoint. Hopefully we have enough battery to get back up, showing 40% when I stopped. Cool, let's go. Showing 38% while I'm going uphill. Yeah, we'll let you know how it goes. We're only at 17 miles. And we have made it back. So we got 14% uh, yeah. and still had plenty of battery life, 25.4 miles. So that wraps up the initial ride, and some of you might be disappointed that it's down to 14% at only 25 miles, but I think that's actually pretty decent, especially considering we don't have the tires pumped all the way up. I, I, I bumped it up to 29 miles an hour we were doing. I mean, that's the really nice thing about having these removable batteries. I can put this on the charger now, slide this in, and we are just good to go. Power this back on, and we're back to 100%.
And then I could plug this battery into the charger, which I never showed you in the beginning. We got red light, fan came on, and uh, I got it plugged into this battery bank here. So it's pulling 167 watts. You dummy. He says, get this thing off of me. Let's try out those headlights. You hold the positive, and then you see the headlight indicator, and it dims the screen. And there's a look at the front, nice and bright. I'll have to try that out later. You can pivot it up and down. And then there's a look at the tail light. And the brake lights, right there. Okay, and now for a non-pedal assist, flat ground range test. We got two fully charged batteries. So I'm gonna run this one all the way down. Hoping to get 30 miles out of it. I don't know, we'll see. Got this cranked up to 28 mile an hour like I showed you before. We're in Abilene, Texas. And I'll let you know how it goes. We are hitting some dirt roads, but they're all flat and smooth. Kind of just going wherever. Son of a peach. We got a flat tire. Another one. This time in the rear. And I brought a patch kit but said, eh, I'll be okay without the air pump. Well, it's going to be a long walk back. And make that two flats because I just had a Thor in the front pulled out. I shouldn't have done and now it's leaking look here's here's another what's this yeah i gotta get some flat protection on these there's so much sharp stuff out here i've never had this bad of luck with with bicycle tires it's more of them one two these little guys are in there too it's certainly uh nice out here though i could hang out here all day uh, five minutes later pickup truck ended up coming by and uh he's going where i'm going I really appreciate it, man. It would have been a long, long walk back. You ever had your own such burrito? No, it's pretty good. You need to get you one, yeah, to make sure they got taco sauce for yeah. it. Hey, man, I can't thank you enough for the ride. That uh, oh, it just saved me quite, quite a headache. Yeah. Guess I ought to fix these tires since this is our spare vehicle in case the El Camino breaks down. Uh, so here's these little guys. This is I found three of these in the back and two in the front. Uh, so instead of patching all those, I'm gonna just throw some slime in each one. Ended up putting 16 ounces in each tire. Let's take it for a ride and see if that takes care of it. Well, tire slime held overnight, 30 PSI. Gonna give this range test one more go down the same roads. I reset our trip and started map my ride again. And we've made it back to the same spot we were yesterday. County Route 503. So far, I'm gonna say the slime and the tires, best upgrade ever. Just hit the 10 mile mark, and on our Met My Ride, we're indicating 9.8 miles. That's about 2%, I think it is. And we've dropped down to 46% already. Wow. So uh, I guess we'll start heading back toward the direction of Abilene. I did bring a spare battery. But... just rolled over 20 miles we're at 15 percent and we're indicating 19.6 miles well oh, finally starting to run out of juice a whopping six and a half miles later we're at 26.7 we're finally down to five percent so that last uh reserve that was pretty hefty however at five percent it just completely shut off as soon as it hit five percent now i can slap the new battery on and head back that answers that question 180 pound rider six foot two you're good for you know a safe I'd, I'd call it 24 miles flat ground uh but 26.7 was the max you would get way more distance if you were keeping us down around 20 miles an hour and pedal assisting you could easily get 50 miles out of this bike no problem i just wanted to give you an idea of battery power only doing top speed and i think another huge upgrade on this bike would be a bigger ring gear so you could actually pedal assist when you're in the top gear doing 28. i mean right now if you you're just whirling the pedals too too fast to be able to give it any power let's see the battery meter e one bar plug this in and let you know how long it takes to be fully charged 
Well, several weeks later and finally back home, ready to put a cap on this video, El Camino trip is done, but this really came in handy and made our trip so much more enjoyable. Like we could just park the El Camino, hop on this and go cruising through town. Didn't show it in this video, but in, in one of the El Camino videos, we, we just put a foam pad under these, these bungees and put a couple pegs on the back, you know, custom made. And uh, this was just so nice to cruise around with me and Jen. The range, you know, I would have been hoping for, to get a little bit more. As you saw that first range test, we did almost 26 miles, I think, and, and still had that 15% left. So it seems when you're bumping up to 28 mile an hour, it does take a bit more stress, uh, you know, load on that battery. See, I added a, a bike pump and now I keep the patches. Haven't had any issues with flat tires ever since adding the tire slime. So tire protection is a must, especially out west like that. They also have tire inserts. I'll be doing a video later on, but for now, this one's gonna keep the tire slime. But, but like I got a flat on this guy the other day and it's just, I'm, I'm done with these flats all the time. So you know, giant thumbs up on this magic cycle. No problems at all the entire trip. And I definitely give it my seal of approval. Also, I think I showed a few clips of it in the El Camino part three, but when we had this strapped on the roof, my tarp system failed and this thing got blasted with rain for an entire day straight, about six hours of driving or so. Uh, it's perfect still. I'm hoping water didn't get in any critical areas, but time will tell on that. I took it for a good ride through the rain today as well. And uh, so clearly they're pretty water resistant, you know, nothing got inside of the display. Or, or anything of that sort. And that wraps it up. Hopefully I covered enough detail to give you an idea of what the Magicycle Cruiser Pro is all about. There'll be a link to it down below if you wanna check them out, maybe purchase one. And otherwise, you know, thank you very much for tuning in if you did. And I will see you in probably another review video or part four El Camino coming up. Actually, it's gonna be, I don't know if it'll be called part four because it's gonna be the, the Lincoln. Anyway, that's all gonna be on the main channel and we will see you then. Uh, so now let's check out that uh, owner's manual and that'll wrap it up. See so you guys, thanks so much. Kind of a hefty manual, 45 pages. So I'm gonna flip through this fairly quick and then you guys can just pause it if you want to uh, view anything. I'll just make sure we get a clear image of each page. Got all your specs, and I will try to to keep quiet, um, so you can just you know check it out. Gotta go quicker than that. This will take forever. I feel like I need to come up with a new new method for this. Okay, got some gear oil on this thing too, so excuse the stains. That should definitely be enough time for you guys to pause, right? I think so. Not really a practical means. Um, but this is essentially like you flipping through and if there's a page you're like, oh, I need to see more of that. Just be ready on that uh, space button, pause button, right? In fact, maybe we can just go like this. Does that make more sense? I don't know. I'm not sure anymore. This is so professional. So professional. I'll also put a link to this uh, if they have it on their website. Sometimes these companies don't have the, the full manual on the website, and that's why I try to do this. Uh, you know, so I don't have to buy the bike, or, or you can read through this stuff before you actually get the bike. Um, should be available on the website. And apparently, I'm going to just keep talking. I'll cover the words with my fingers. All right, page 21. Here we go. Moving right along. If there's any uh, blurriness, blame it on the Samsung S22. It seems like sometimes with the, the words on the screen, it tries to almost put like a beauty face on it or something and blur the words. Notice that with this, and I don't have, you know, beauty face turned on, but I only have two minutes now. Hmm. I really do like the interface on this bike. It's it's the best I've seen out of any electric bike that I have. Uh, the one thing I didn't mention in the video though, hey, new stuff, uh, cruise control. I thought for sure you'd be able to turn that off and I didn't see a way to turn it off. Of course, I didn't read through this entire manual yet either. So maybe you guys will see a way, but uh, the cruise control is kind of annoying because you know it comes on automatically. And if you're not uh, ready for that or used to that, it could certainly cause an accident of sorts. And same with when you go to pedal, you know, it just kind of 
when you're pedaling forward, it abruptly sends power to the wheel and it doesn't shut off instantaneously when you stop pedaling, uh, which that actually caused me and Jen to crash into a small wall at a motel. Uh, not a big incident, but it was, you know, it spooked, scared Jen a little bit. We're almost there, page 43. Some rider tips, warranty info. So I, I suppose it is nice to see a big manual like this. Thanks for riding Magis Cycle Bike. And uh, that's it. That's your website. All right, so thanks so much for watching.